And we've got, oh, what are we doing? Oh, that's fine, fuck it. Come on, Jesus, turn around, mate. Oh, you want to press record, and I don't even know what I'm fucking doing. My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and in this episode, I ain't got anything written on the board. Um, it's tapered bearings. Tapered bearing removal. So, I said in the ER5 video, if anyone you're watching that, when I was showing off my swanky tool of how to install tapered roller bearings properly and so on and so forth, one of the problems you can have is if that someone hasn't preloaded it properly, hasn't fitted the seal, hasn't done something, really abused it or whatever, you might buy a second hand bike where the tapered bearings themselves are fucked, the race is all chewed up, it's just shocking, horrible and crap. One of the problems you can get though is that the headstock looks like this and what happens sometimes is that your tapered roller bearing race is this big, like so. And you can't get the bugger out because when you used to take your old bearing races out you'd stick a rod down the inside, you'd stick a rod down the inside, you'd give the inside of the bearing a good whack you give the inside of the bearing a good whack from the inside with a rod like you've seen me do in the videos if you've watched that and you get the fuckers out. Now you're completely stuffed because there is no lip to get at. So how do you do it? There are two ways generally that you can do it. There's variants on them two ways but generally they are two, there are two ways. The way that I would much rather do is the one I'm going to tell you and then the second one is one you can do at home. It's a bit barbaric, but you can do it. So the first one I want to tell you about is the one that I would prefer to do, is to get it welded. So basically what you can do is you can fit a round disc with a shaft on it. So you have a disc of steel like this, and then you have a rod welded to that or something like that. And then what you do is, that's a shit pen, go away. Um, then what you do is you stick this disc in here like this, with your, your rod, do not have to be too big or anything like that, you can put a hole in it if you want to, something to grab hold of, or whatever. Um, or you can just put a disc in, I've seen people do it the other way as well. But basically all you do is you just stick a disc in, I saw someone use a socket once, and it went horribly wrong because of the Valadium in the steel. And basically all you do is you just weld this to the race, the welding, the heat from the welding, you just have to usually generally give it four or five tacks. I try and do one there, one there, one there, one there, something like that, make it nice and even. You can MIG weld it, TIG weld it, TIG weld it's the you know the prettier way of doing it and all the rest of it. And what you do is then is once you've got this, you can stick your rod in, give it a tap, and the whole thing should you know will come out. And the best thing to use is a pipe that is about the same size as the interior down of your stem, so it doesn't rock and wobble, and then you can whack it down straight down and it will pull it free. What's the second way of doing it? This is the way I don't recommend you do unless you're completely fucked and stuck. And someone um, asked me this question recently. What you do is you drill, <laughs> I don't like drilling into frames, but you drill two holes here. Uh, three or four, I would just stick with two. You drill two holes through this actual collar here. And then basically when you drill down, you'll feel it hit the steel race because it's hard as fuck. Um, as soon as you've hit that hard race, stop drilling and then basically you can stick a little punch in there and you can give it a tappy tap tap and just, you know, basically work it out and you'll be able to get the sod out. Then what you have to do is, or what I would do, is then you can stick your uh, new bearing race in there and what you can do is you can fill it with JB Weld bit of silicon's not a bad idea if anyone has to get it out in the future you know you just squirt a bit of silicon sealant in there or something like that get a bit on your fingers squash it in and then just wipe it off nice and smooth or what have you you are doing damage to the frame as in you're drilling holes in it that you know unless you're going to weld them back up welding them back up seems a bit of a stupid thing to do but you have to fill it with something otherwise water is going to ingress inside here like so and rust the back of your race probably making it warped and fucking it will probably end up popping out because it will be a massive corrosion because these are hardened steel races 
generally it's tool steel, and tool steel loves to fucking rust. You know what I mean? And before anyone says, no, you don't make stainless steel races, stainless steel is uh, quite a gally steel. It likes to gall and just mush up and all the rest of it. And hardened stainless steels really aren't that hard. Um, so we make races out of hardened steel, tool steel, basically, pretty much. Hope that makes sense. Please, 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 please don't drill it. If you can really avoid it, get someone just to stick a couple of blobs of tack weld on there. Another thing you can do as well is with the inside of your actual um, stem here, if you want to coat this on the inside with some carbon, graphite powder, something like that. That stops the um, or anti-spatter or something, a lot of anti-spatter or whatever. That will help stop you welding the race. And I've seen that before. I've seen someone weld the race by accident to the actual... Um, uh, down tube of their frame like a complete fucking set of idiots there's actually two guys who did that, it was hilarious I watched them do it um, <laughs> you know, I couldn't stop him it was too late, he went a bit wayward with his MIG welder and welded the whole thing up hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit